We are in a series that is called, What Kind of Promise Is This? What Kind of Promise Is This? And we have been talking about the personality, the person of the Holy Spirit. And so on last week, we began the first part of the message, which is the work of the Holy Spirit. And we told you four things last week that the Holy Spirit does. He is involved in the new birth. He is involved in giving life. He is the comforter, intercessor, provider, all those kinds of things. And so this week we want to continue and hit four more things that the Holy Spirit does. Amen. Amen. We want to thank God for our worshiping, I'm sorry, for our male chorus. Amen. Amen. Brother Harvey on the drums. Amen. Brother Borkins is coming from out of town. I think he got a little stuck, so we're praying for him, and we thank God for him. But would you real quickly, really real quickly, I want you to get our foundational scripture, the book, the the book of Acts, which is our foundational scripture. Then I'm going to let you be seated as we're going to just research the scriptures a little bit and deal with four more things that the Holy Spirit does. But our foundational scripture comes from the book of Acts, chapter 1. Book of Acts, chapter 1. And we're beginning at the fourth verse. Remember, this is our foundational scripture for our whole series. What kind of promise is this? Acts 1 and 4, do you have it? Okay, and it reads, And being assembled together with them, commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father, which said he, ye have heard of me. For John truly baptized with water, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost, not many days hence. What kind of promise is this? You may be seated in the presence of a the Lord. I told you on last week that the Holy Spirit has an assignment. We described it as this. God the Father is sitting on the throne. And I use the middle seat as the throne. Jesus is on the right hand of the Father. So Jesus will be sitting where Elder is sitting right now. Elder got Jesus' seat right now. But, <laughs> but the Holy Spirit... <laughs> But the Holy Spirit is in work in the earth. There was a promise given to us in the Old Testament. God said, I can't deal with y'all this way no more because I gave y'all a law. You can't obey the law. So I'm going to have to do something different. I'm going to have to give you a comforter that's going to live on the inside. That's going to live on the inside. And so the New Testament brings us into the era of the Holy Spirit living on the inside. I told you that the Holy Spirit living on the inside is like this. The baptism of the Holy Ghost is like this. It's like jumping into the pool and getting soaked from the top of your head to the sole of your feet. That's the baptism. But I also let you know that many saints, many people in church are like the children on a summer day just running through the sprinkler and just getting wet a little bit. Yeah, getting wet a little bit. That's not the baptism. That's just getting wet. You got to get soaked from the top of your head to the sole of your feet. You got to make a plunge into this thing. So the Holy Spirit has an assignment. I believe the reason why we don't really acknowledge the Holy Spirit and we don't want to receive him because we don't really know what he does. And so it's my, it is my behavior assignment my behavior assignment for this series to get us to know what the Holy Spirit really does. Because it is my assignment to get the whole church filled with the Holy Ghost. All right? So we dealt with four of the things that the Holy Spirit does. And so I want to deal with four more things that he does also. It's a total of 12. It's a total of 12 assignments that the Holy Spirit has. I dealt with four last week. You want here? Go to... YouTube channel. It'll be up there. Amen. Amen. But we want to deal with the next four. Would you go with me to the gospel according to St. John chapter 14? The gospel according to St. John chapter 14. And we're going to stay there for the next two things on the list. Gospel according to St. John chapter 14. We want to look at the 26th verse. 
When you have it, say amen. To give us a clear understanding, I'm going to read it from the King James Version. Then I'm going to read it from the Amplified, and then I'm going to read from the Message Bible. Amen? amen? The King James Version, Gospel according to St. John, chapter 14, verse 26. But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, who the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things. And bring all things to your remembrance, whatsoever I have said unto you. The Amplified Bible reads, but the Comforter, the Counselor, Helper, Intercessor, Advocate, Strengthener, Standbyer, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, in my place to represent me and act on my behalf. He will teach you all things. He will cause you to recall, will remind you of, bring to your remembrance everything I have told you. The message, Bible. I'm telling you these things while I'm still living with you. Jesus talking. The friend, the Holy Spirit, who the Father will send at my request, will make everything plain to you. He will remind you of all the things I have told you. I'm leaving you well and whole that my parting gift to you, peace, I don't leave you the way you used to, I don't leave you the way you used to be being left, feeling abandoned, bereaved, so don't be upset. The first, the fifth thing that the Holy Ghost does in the earth, he is the teacher of truth. He is the teacher of truth. The reason why people get mixed up about the doctrine of the Bible is because they don't have the Holy Ghost. Oh, that, I know, that hit home, that hit home. The reason people get upset and get mixed up because they don't have the Holy Spirit. Because the Holy Spirit will remind you and tell you that that don't sound right. He'll tell you that sounds a little off. You, you need to look in the scripture for yourself. So the Holy Spirit, although God has put teachers in the earth, the Holy Spirit is a revealer of the truth. The teacher in the earth is to confirm what God has already told you in his word. He's just to confirm. The Holy Spirit. Spirit will give you a revelation in the word, and he'll let the teacher, the pastor, the preacher, the evangelist, the prophet, the apostle come and confirm what God has already told you in his word. Why, pastor? Because God don't want you dependent upon any man. He wants you dependent upon God. The man is the one who's confirming what God has already told you. I can't teach you everything. Although I walk in many offices, I can't teach you everything. You still need an evangelist. You still need the prophet. You still need the apostle. You still need the teacher. But they are just to confirm to us what the Holy Spirit is already revealing to us. Now, don't get big-headed because you got a revelation from God. Everybody gets revelation from God. Something you got today, somebody got last week. Something they got last week, somebody got two years ago. What they got two years ago, somebody got 20 years ago. Because the Bible declares there's nothing new under the sun. It is the same revelation. You just got a revealing of it now. Sometimes you're not illuminated to what the word is saying. Don't get it messed, with, don't get it messed up with Illuminati. We ain't talking about Illuminati. I'm talking about being illuminated. This ain't no new world order. We ain't talking about that. I'm talking about being illuminated in the word of God. Just bringing to light what the word says. So the revelation is already there. Sometimes we cannot see it. And God enlightens us. He illuminates us to what is already there. The Holy Ghost comes to illuminate you to what is already in the word. He is a teacher of the truth. So that's why you get a word and I come and confirm it. Because that's my job is to confirm what the Holy Ghost has already told you. I'm not supposed to be your teacher by yourself. Ain't no man supposed to be your teacher by himself. My head doesn't say Holy Ghost. This was written before I was born. He was sent before I came on the earth. He was sent to be our teacher. But we needed to know that we're hearing for God right. That's why he sent teachers, pastors, Apostles, evangelists, 
to for the perfecting of the saints to confirm what the Holy Spirit is already telling us. You get confused with the Jehovah Witness because you don't got the Holy Ghost. Oh, I ain't gonna help. I ain't gonna get no help in here. I can't, but I'm just telling you what the truth said. You get confused about the Buddhists and the Muslims because you don't have the Holy Ghost. Because when the Holy Ghost is on the inside, you can't tell me something that's supposed to be in the Word. It doesn't resonate in my spirit. My spirit is upset, and I got to find out, is that really true? I got to see. This, I just, this don't sound right. Lord, you got to show me that. You got to help me find because that doesn't settle in my spirit. You can hear preachers on the radio, and they say things, and you just like, oh, that just don't. Lord, show this to me. I need to find that in the Word. I need, a, oh, I need a New Testament revelation about what you're saying, and I need two or three witnesses to back it up. Oh, God, that's scriptural. So the Holy Ghost is a revealer of the truth. He is the teacher of the truth. He comes to teach you the truth of the Word so that nobody will be able to confuse you. The reason why we're carried away by every wind and doctrine, we don't have enough of the Holy Ghost in the side of us to stop us to be like an anchor when the wind begins to blow our way. So everybody who sounds good moves us every way because we're not rooted and grounded in the Word, and the Holy Ghost is not on the inside telling us that's not right. You may not know what's wrong with it, but on the inside, your inward witness that the Holy Ghost is communicating with is saying there's something wrong with that doctrine. Yes. If you can't find what I'm teaching in the Word, you need to stop listening to me. Amen. If the Holy Ghost ain't confirming what I'm teaching in the Word, you need to stop listening to me. Because every rhema word should be revealed and backed up by a logos word. Let me get the big words out of the way. Every word that comes out of a preacher's mouth, which is a rhema word, should be backed up by the written word, which is the logos of the word. Ain't no time to get deep in here just in case you don't know all those terms. Make it plain for you. It has to be backed up. Because I'm not preaching my philosophy. I'm preaching the word of God. I've been assigned to preach his word, not my word. And the Holy Ghost is supposed to reveal to us the truth. And we need the Holy Ghost to reveal to us the truth. He is the teacher of the truth. If you want to know more truth, get more Holy Ghost. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, God. You want more truth? Get more Holy Ghost. You want more revelation? Get more Holy Ghost. Can you stop sitting on the side of the pool and getting your feet wet? Can you go ahead and get in the water and get drenched in the water? Can I propose to you that 95% of the church is just sitting on the side of the pool getting their, food, getting their feet wet? And you only got 5% of the church that's really jumping in the water and getting the whole thing? That's why you don't have a whole lot of people in Bible study because only 5% of the church is trying to get wet. The rest of them are sitting on the side of the pool and they like coming on Sunday because you get the babe in the sunlight sitting on the side of the pool. But when you come on Wednesday night, you got to jump in the pool to get the real word. That's why I can't get all of y'all here on Wednesday. I can get you here on Sunday. I ain't talking to nobody here. Let me get ready to talk to the wall. Let me, let me get talk to the wall. Because when you really want a revelation of the word, you go where it's being taught. When I was growing up and we went to Huntersville to get in the pool, we stood in a long line just to get in the pool. And you might not get to stay in the pool for maybe just an hour, but just an hour in the pool, I will wait two hours in line. I can't get people to wait five minutes. Oh, God, for the word of God. And it's more refreshing than jumping in the pool. And you want to know why you're on a roller coaster? Because the word settles you. But how can the anchor be dropped if the captain of the ship, which is the Holy Ghost, don't give the order to drop the anchor? He is a teacher of the truth. And we need him to teach us the truth. That's one of the reasons why we need the Holy Ghost. The next one, the next one, and let's read the next work of the Holy Ghost. He is a reminder 
of the truth. It's in the same passage of scripture. I don't have to reread it for you. It's in the same passage of scripture. He is a reminder of the truth. The truth that he teaches you, he reminds you of it. But can I tell you this? He cannot remind you of something you have not read. Oh, God. Oh, I hope all y'all going with me tonight. I hope I'm not hitting too hard. I need you to go with me 2.30. But let me say it again. He's a reminder of what you are read. If you have not read it, he cannot remind you of it. How can he remind you of something you have not read? I need God to come to me right now. I'm in trouble. You ain't read nothing in the song, so how can it bubble up from the inside and come out of your mouth? How can a word come to your rescue that you ain't never read? When you're in trouble, the Holy Ghost will cause the word to rise up on the inside of you. And when you really got the word on the inside, or Robert said, it'll talk back to you because the world is alive. It'll talk back to you in a time of trouble. When I really get down, I remember the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He making me lie down in green pastures. When I really get in trouble, I realize that I can't no weapon formed against me shall prosper. Every tongue that rise up against me shall be condemned. When I really get in trouble, I remember I can do all things in Christ which strengthens me. I abide in the shadow of the Almighty. The Lord is my Lord is my salvation and my shield. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. See, it's trying to bubble up now. Who shall I be afraid of? I'm trying to cut it off, but it's trying to bubble up on the inside. When you got the word on the inside, the Holy Ghost will stir that thing up, and it'll come when you need it. The reason why you ain't got no help in the time of need, you don't got no word in you. Jesus, how can I use a tank that has no missiles in it? It ain't worth nothing. You can give me an M16, but if it ain't got no bullets in it, I ain't doing nothing. I'm just pulling. And you like, oh, he's shooting at me. You be like, oh, you don't got no bullets. <laughs> it's over then. You got all this ammo. And you ain't using it. And you don't have to rely on your own mentality to bring it back to your remembrance. That's the job of the Holy Ghost. Mother Cleveland, the prophet Mother Cleveland, I went to the Cleveland's house and she asked me, she said, Elder, I was a pastor. They said, Elder, do you have a photographic memory? I said, no, Mother, I don't. But when I'm in the spirit, all the scriptures just come to me. She said, well, the Lord told me that. I just wanted to confirm. <laughs> when I'm in the spirit, you can't, you can't mess with me because word, the word comes like that. Why? Because I read it. Oh, God, can you no know, help it here? Why? Because I've read it. I haven't just read it in the time of trouble. I haven't just read it when I needed it. I read it just to sit down to read it. I've been through the Bible at least twice. The whole Bible, at least twice. At least twice. Can't get more than twice. I don't know about more than twice, but I know I've been at least twice. Get stuck in some of those books in the Old Testament, but I've been through at least twice. Because every now and then, you just need to read the, book, read the book like you read a good novel. You ain't reading for no specific study. You're not trying to get no message together. You're just reading and you're trying to pull it down, but you keep reading. And I, I got to get out of here, but you keep on reading. I, can't, I, just, I just can't put this down. I can't understand how you read a New York best author books, but you can't read the best selling book of all time. I just can't understand that. I can't understand that. How did 50 Grace of Say beat the Bible? It got mighty quiet in here. When you got a love story in the Bible that's better than any author, let me talk about Samson and Delilah. It's better than any love story you ever told. Let me talk about David and Bathsheba. Let me talk about David and Abigail. You really want to love her, go talk to David. Oh, God. I didn't know that because you don't read the book. You don't read the book. I don't need nothing to make nothing up when I got a real story. When I, got the, when I got the queen of Sheba telling Solomon, the how hasn't been told. 
And when you go read history, when she left, she was pregnant. Oh, God, they ain't going to mess with y'all. Y'all going to go read that now. Oh, where, where that's at, Pastor? Where that's at? She came and said a half hasn't been told. She was exhausted. But when she left, she was with child because Solomon was just like his daddy. I ain't messing with y'all. He was just like his daddy. She came and wanted to find out, and he let her know what it was all about. Let me get back to my text. Let me get back to my text. <laughs> Let me get back to my text. Oh, God. How can he bring back to remember something you have not read? He's a reminder. And what I've learned about the Holy Ghost, right when I need the right word, if I read it, he provides it. Right when I don't even feel like picking up the book because I'm tired and I'm going through, he let the book start picking me up. Right when I said I, I ain't reading nothing else, ain't nothing working, it just begins to bubble on the inside. And I just, it won't be quiet in my head. I'm saying, Lord, Lord, leave me alone. Lord, I won't leave you alone. You remember this scripture and you remember that scripture. And it begins to come back to me. But you cannot bring something back to you that you have not put in there. It's like a computer. How can you do a program on a computer that you never programmed? Oh, let me get a little better. Let me get a little better. Let me go modern day. How can you do an app that you never downloaded on your phone? I don't have that on my phone. You ain't downloaded. Where you get that game from? I went to my app store. I downloaded it. That's how I can play. But you can't play no app that you haven't downloaded. It's available to you. It's free. Most phones can get any app. But you can't play it if you don't download it. Don't get mad with me because I downloaded the app and you didn't. Oh, God. That was a word. You missed that. That went right over your head. Don't get mad with me. Don't get mad with me because the word comes to me because I downloaded the app. I downloaded songs. I downloaded Proverbs. I downloaded the gospel according to St. John. I downloaded the gospel according to Mark, Luke, and John. I went to 1st, 2nd John. Went to 1st, 2nd Peter. Went to 1st Thessalonians, 2nd Thessalonians, 1st Timothy, 2nd Timothy. Even went to the book of Ruth because I need to know that story. And then went to the book of Esther. I downloaded all that. Don't get mad with me because you ain't downloaded it. Because anything you download, you can bring back up. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Anything you download, you can bring back up. And the thing about the Holy Ghost, he don't have no frauds. He don't run out of data. You can run out of data on your phone. The Holy Ghost never run out of data. You got unlimited data with the Holy Ghost. I can get it at any time. I never have a signal problem. I got Wi-Fi 24-7. If I can't make it no plainer than that, if you ain't get that, I'm just sorry. <laughs> That's what the Holy Ghost does. That's what the Holy Ghost does. He is a teacher of truth. He is a reminder of truth. Let's go to the last one. Would you go with me, stay in the gospel according to St. John and turn over to the 16th chapter. The 16th chapter. Looking at the 13th verse. The 16th chapter, the 13th verse. Do you have it? I'm halfway done. Look what the Bible says. How about when he, and this is Jesus talking, the spirit of truth is come. He will guide you into all truth, for he will not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will show you things to come. Let me read it from the Amplified Bible. But when he, the spirit of truth, the truth-giving spirit comes, he will guide you into all truth, the whole truth, the full truth, for he will not speak his own message on his own authority, but he will tell you whatever he hears from the Father, and he will give the message that has been given to him, and he will announce and declare to you the things that are come that would happen in the future. Let me read it from the Message Bible. I still have many things to tell you, but you can't handle them now. But when the friend comes, the spirit of truth, he will take you by the hand and guide you into all the truth there is. He won't draw attention to itself, but he will make sense out of what is about to happen indeed. And out of all that I have done and said, he will honor me. He will take 
from me and deliver it to you. Everything the Father has is also mine. That is why I said he will take from me and deliver to you. The Holy Spirit is a guider of the truth. Not only does he teach you the truth, not only does he remind you of the truth, but he guides you in the truth. In other words, he tells you how to handle the truth. He tells you how to handle the truth. Because some of y'all, like Nichols said, you can't handle the truth. And what is the truth that he's handling? He is revealing to you what Jesus and the Father is talking about you. They're having a discussion about you. And the Holy Ghost is a fly on the wall that is hearing everything. And he's revealing to you what they're talking to you about. Oh, God. He's talking about you. He's talking about Deacon Joy. He's like, oh, Deacon Joy, he'll make a good deacon. What we need to do, we need to work on him to get him to the deaconship. Okay, Holy Ghost, go reveal to him that I'm about to promote him, and this is what he needs to do to get in order. Oh, God. He, he's a reveal. He guides you into the truth because sometimes you have the truth, but you don't know what to do with the truth. So he's a guider of the truth. God doesn't give you a gun and don't teach you how to use it. He teaches you how to put the safety on. He teaches you how to clean it. He teaches you how to take the bullets out. He teaches you how to store it because he knows if you don't clean it, it'll jam up on you if you use it too much. And when you need it, it won't be ready for you. He is a guider of the truth. So he doesn't speak. He doesn't speak of himself. He only speaks about what he hears from the Father and from the Son. Because the Father is in the throne. The Son is on the right hand. And they ain't like some of us don't talk to one another. It's bad when married couple go on a trip, but they don't talk to each other while they're on the trip. Five hours in the car, don't kid nothing to one another. But that's a different subject for a different time because ain't none of y'all said amen, so I know I must have hit a point, but I'm going, I'll deal with that later. He, the Holy Ghost, Jesus is talking to the Father, and the Father is talking to Jesus. Because sometimes God is laughing at us. Sitting there, he's sitting there. Oh, wow. Jesus, did you, did you see? Did you see that? And they said, that's me. I don't got nothing to do with that. That's, that's, did you see that? Go tell the Holy Ghost, tell them that ain't me. I ain't do that. I ain't do that. What moves God out of his throne to stand up? He hears worship. He hears praise. Hold up, somebody's calling my name. Yes. Jesus, well, I think, it's, I think it's that one down there. They're going through something. They're worshiping me. They're worshiping me in the midst of trouble. Let me go see what they're doing. Your tribulation don't make God get off his throne. Your problems don't make God get off his throne. Worship makes him stand up and say, hold up, what's happening here? They, they're worshiping me. Hold up, but aren't they going through something while they're worshiping me? Aren't they having difficulty? They're worshiping me. Because the Bible says he inhabits the praises of Israel. We are the spiritual Israel, which means he inhabits our praises. So when he hears our praises, he gets up and says, let me go and buy with them. The Holy Ghost is a guider into all truth. And he only speaks what he hears. So when the Holy Ghost is telling you something, he's telling you what he heard. And if it was in the court of law, it won't be hearsay. Because all three are one. So it's as if he said it himself. And he only tells what he hears. So the next time you disregard the voice of the Holy Ghost, you better remind yourself, he's only speaking what he hear. That's like telling, that's like me telling Trinity, go tell Livy or something. And Livy don't move because she think it came from Trinity. She don't know, I'm the one that told Trinity to tell her. So she don't move. Then I got to get up and tell her, didn't I tell you? Oh, but Trinity said, no, I sent Trinity to tell you. It's the same thing with the Holy Ghost. We don't move because we think, oh, but the Holy Ghost has been sent by the Father to tell us something. He is a guider in all truth. The last point I'm going to hit today. Stay in the gospel according to the same passage of Scripture. The last part of it said, he will reveal unto you things to come. 
The Holy Ghost will show you things to come. He is a revealer of events. He'll show you what's about to happen. He'll speak it to you. Let me give you the perfect example. So I'm about to get out of here. Several years ago on President's Day, my daughter, Crystal, one of the twins, had an accident with one of my vehicles. But I knew that morning she was going to have the accident. I was in prayer in the kitchen. I remember what I was. I was walking, right? Those had been in my house in my refrigerator here, my, my dishwasher here. And I was praying. I was walking towards the living room where the Lord said accident. And I began to plead the blood. I said, I rebuke this now in the name of Jesus. God was showing me something that was about to happen. I got the phone call. Daddy, I've been in the accident. Hold up, Lord. We got to talk about this thing. Why are you showing me something that I can't prevent? God said, no, it had to happen because I need to teach her a lesson, but you stopped it from being worse than it was supposed to be. God will show you things to come. You said the accident didn't still happened. Yeah, it still happened, but she was okay. The car was towed up, but she was okay. But let me show you how good God is. The same day I was driving to my mother-in-law's house, and before I turned to her house, it was a Jeep parked on the side for sale. I said, hold up, we need another car. So we got that Jeep the same week they had the accident. Because I heard God say accident, and I did what he told me to do. I prevented it from being worse. He will show you things to come. But most of the time, we're not in tune to hear what God is saying. And we're trying to figure out, why, did, why was it this bad? Why did this happen? Because we didn't hear God showing us it was about to happen. I heard the Lord say, accident. I knew I was in the house. My wife was in the house. Trinity wasn't born, and Libby won't drive an age. And only one other person who had one of my vehicles. And she was supposed to be home that night, and she disobeyed and came home that morning. And the Lord said, accident. And I rebuked it in the name of Jesus. I pleaded the blood of Jesus. So when I got there, she hadn't even gotten out of the car. The police said she won't get out of the car. I said, okay, I got it. Come on, Crystal. Get in the van. And they did a 360 on the bridge where it transferred from Princess Anne to Pleasant Valley Road. And she 360 hit the car in front of her, 360, where it damaged the whole front end and the back end of the car. But it didn't flip. It didn't, she was, the front of it was on the edge of the bridge. It didn't flip and go over the other side. You got to understand, when you got the Holy Ghost, it'll help keep your children safe. Well, you got the Holy Ghost. It'll help prevent things from coming. Yes. And the Lord told me, I said, Lord, I don't understand. I'm looking at the pictures. Lord, I don't understand. He said, it was supposed to be worse. But I had to let it happen to give her a message. But you prevented it from being worse. The car was totaled. But she was okay. I can deal with a total car. I don't want no total daughter. The Holy Ghost. It's not a game. It's not a feel good. It doesn't make me run up and down. That's getting to happen. The Holy Ghost don't make me run up and down the church. Don't make me do hot wheels and black flips. That's not his job. That's not his assignment. He didn't come from that. That's just you getting excited about how good God's been to you. The Holy Ghost comes to do something real in my life. So others can see the glory of God. How did you prevent all that from happening? The Lord told me because I got the Holy Ghost. I'm his child, so he don't mind talking to me. We're on one accord. I'm listening, so he don't mind talking to me. That's what the Holy Spirit comes to do. He comes to work in our life that way. So things can be prevented. I don't have to be confused. I don't have to be mixed up. He is the the fighter of the truth reminds me of it, gas me into it, and then show me things to come. That's his job. The only issue is, will I let him do his job on, in my life? 
because I'm closing on this point. The Holy Ghost is a gentleman. What do you mean by that, Pastor? I can open the door for you, but you don't got to walk through. You want to be all proper. I can't open the door for myself. Okay. Go ahead. I must still be a gentleman and I open it for you. You don't have to go through. I can open the car door for you. You don't have to get out. The Holy Ghost ain't going to make you do anything. He's going to prompt you to do it. You make the decision to do it or not. That's why the Holy Ghost is described as a small, still voice. Because he's not a maker of anything. But if you hear a loud, authority voice, that's the Father talking. You might want to move. You might want to jump. Because that means all the things he did to try to prompt you, you won't listen to. So that means he got to talk to you himself. You might want to move when you hear his voice. I know they don't teach you this in seminary. They don't teach you the distinction between the voices. They make you think all of them are the same, but they're not. The Holy Ghost is a small, still voice. He prompts me from the inside. God says, do it. And he makes sure I heard him, and he doesn't like repeating this stuff because he doesn't repeat it. You heard me the first time. I don't got to say it again. That's what the Holy Ghost comes to do. And we need to let the Holy Ghost work in our lives. Rest to your feet all over the building. And just give God a praise right there. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm not going to preempt it. We're going to learn about the other four workings of the Holy Spirit. And then we're going to learn about the three ways that the Bible tells us how to receive it. Because by the time we get to that, you'll be ready if you really want it to receive it. Ain't having no tearing service. You're just going to get it by faith. Yes. You're going to get it by faith. If I lay the foundation, if I teach you the word, you'll be ready for the invitation. Would you lift those hands to the Lord? Father, I thank you for the word that went forth. And I know it has not come back void. Prick the hearts of those who you're pricking the heart of. Stir up those who you're stirring up. Because you have something for them. But they need the power of the Holy Ghost working in their lives 100%. I pray that we will stop half-stepping. That we will stop perpetrating. That we will stop making things difficult and only giving 25 and 30% and think it's all right. I pray, dear Father, that as we're learning more about you in this series, will make the decision to give you 100% that the Holy Ghost may have free reign in our lives. I just don't want to have the Holy Ghost. I want the Holy Ghost to have me. And I thank you for it now. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Come on, give God a praise right there.